Okay. Fudge. Yeah, fudge sickle. Um, <laughs> our tank. El Mayo. Yes. <laughs> El Mayo. Um, yeah, our ten contestants are Maria Alita, Debbie Malone, Greg Riley, Anthony. I'm not even going to try that last name. Michael Wheeler, <laughs> Katrina Kavanagh. Julie McKenzie, who is apparently an award-winning psychic. Uh, Valerie Bradshaw, Heidi Hanley, and Salvatore Trimbole. Mm. And this week, which was its premiere week for season two, they had to find a helicopter in a two uh, in a pine forest that was about two hundred football fields in width and length. So they wow. had 15 minutes to find the pilot of the chopper with only the help of an item from that helicopter pilot. <laughs> mm. So four of them got it. Four of them wow. found him. And two of them, if they had have turned like 100 degrees, or, you know, 100, 360 degrees, there we go, yeah. Another sound bite, yay. Um... <laughs> They would have found it. They were like less than 50 metres away from it and they were just facing the wrong direction. So that would have made over half of the psychics that found it if two of them had have turned around. Mm. Wow. So, dun, 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 dun. See, okay, I have to make a joke here because, well, who? what kind of person would I be if I didn't make this joke? But do you remember a um, a newspaper clipping that went viral of um, the Australian Army lost a um, oh, Hummer? Oh, yes. No, no, it wasn't just a Hummer. It was a fleet of Hummers. They had been done... They were in... Huh? They were camouflaged. Yeah, they were, they were done in camouflage. They took them out into the forest, and they lost them, and they couldn't find them. <laughs> So maybe they need to hire these psychics to go find the summers. Maybe. Or maybe they just That's need... That's all I could see while you were reading that was, okay, they can find a helicopter, but they can't find a Hummer? <laughs> oh, dear. I don't... And I mean the vehicle, not the uh, yeah, other one. not the other one. So, yeah, it looks like in the weeks to come, they're actually going to have them investigating a murder or some sort of evil thing. Uh, last season, they actually took them to one of Australia's most notorious prisons that used to carry out death sentences, and one of the psychics actually ended up with massive scratches across her neck. Wow. So, really creepy. But yeah, we've got one psychic detective in amongst all these. We've got a lot of mediums. Uh, we've got a ghost whisperer. And we have a crystal healer, I think it is. And an intuitive specialist. So, yeah, it's actually quite a good program. I mean, my husband's a skeptic, so there's no way in hell I'd get him sitting there watching it. I don't know how I feel. I mean, I pretty much think that there's more out in that world, or in this world, that we cannot explain. And... I kind of don't like to think that I have any connection to the dead in the way that I could, you know, I see dead people. Um, so I kind of like seeing everybody I else see do dead it. people. Exactly. So I like watching other people do it. I just don't want it to happen to me. So <laughs> True. I mean, scary. sorry. When it comes to um, like seeing people, no, I can't. But I can feel them, and I have I have had a few encounters. But um, I think people that can actually see, I think it's pretty um, astounding, really. <laughs> mm. So, good on you for not getting freaked out, because it would totally scare the fudge sickle out of me. Well, I don't know. See, it's on TV. It's all good. I actually saw last year's winner do a presentation at a shopping center. And just the energy in the room, like... You know, it was almost suffocating, and I was on the second level watching her down on a stage on the first level. And there weren't too many people on the second level watching her because everyone wanted a reading. 
but just the energy and the air in the room was so electric that you could barely breathe. Wow. And that wasn't just me being all hypersensitive and everything. That's what it was like. So I sort of walked away thinking, oh, gee, I can't stay here. It's a little bit, you know, tense. A little bit. Hmm. Um, I had something else I wanted to say. Now I can't remember. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. I did actually have a woo-woo moment this last weekend. Wait, a woo-hoo moment or a woo-hoo moment? Uh, a uh, woo moment. <laughs> I, I walked out... There goes another sound bite. Anyway. <laughs> I walked out into the land room thinking, you know, my daughter's playing with the DVD player. And I swear, I saw... A shadow kid, not not a person, just a kid. Well, kids are people, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and it, kids are people too, Belinda. You know, it was only an absolute minute bit of a second. So it, you know, less than a less than the click of a finger. This thing stood up and ran out of the room, and my daughter was sitting on the lounge chair about five meters away. I'm like. <gasps> Okay, we'll just turn around, walk out of the room, and pretend nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did. But it made the hair. I, oh, it was I kind of had a moment like that uh, a couple of nights ago. I walked into the um, bathroom, and um, I typically I kind of uh, I kind of avoid mirrors, just because mirrors kind of actually freak me out, <clears throat> just because there's so much that can happen with them magically and spiritually and all that but um i was i turned the light off and i turned around and um there was a like just a vague outline of a face looking back at me i was like okay that's weird and i'm sitting there thinking okay how long have they been watching and what they see (laughs) yeah hey this is a private place (laughs) exactly if you're gonna stare at me through a mirror find another one i mean really it's like you pick all the mirrors in the world and you choose mine. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, oh, real quick, off the beaten path entirely. Mm-hmm. Um, Robin called me last night and she said, Becca, I have the greatest story for you. And if I can't find the article, you have to tell it on the radio. I said, okay. Well, I wasn't able to find the article and neither was she. But um, in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, these um, tourists, which I'll emphasize tourist because, well, South Carolina really doesn't need any more but bad publicity even. <clears throat> this little boy, I think he was like seven, was swimming in the ocean and suddenly starts screaming. Um, they get him, they drag him out of the water, and when they, and they think that he has been stung by a jellyfish. Well, when they look closer, because apparently they have to, like, get right up on this kid's leg, they realize that it's a shark bite. I'm like, how do you confuse a jellyfish sting and a shark bite? And Robin goes, I don't know, but I hope they figured it out before they peed on him. (laughs) I do, too. Poor kid. You know, know, the trauma of being bitten by a shark, having everyone think that you're you know, stung by a jellyfish and then have random strangers just whip it out and start peeing on your leg. You'd be like, no, no. <laughs> she said that um, they took the little boy to the hospital, you know, and luckily this this boy, where the shark bit him, they think it was a, um, like a sand shark, which they have been known to come up pretty close to shore. Um, They think it was something like that. And uh, luckily where the shark actually bit him was, it was on the thigh. Uh, any more or any deeper and a little far further over, it would have gotten his femoral artery. Ooh. Or um, any deeper, and it would he would have had to have his leg amputated. So luckily, the boy is fine. He, I mean, he is really, really lucky. Oh, well, it's a good so, thing he's um, he's well, and we hope he makes a full recovery. Poor little tyke. Yes, and uh, I think he's on antibiotics, which wouldn't you want to be after someone peed on you? I mean, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I said that, and I said, okay, wait, wait, wait. Where is Myrtle Beach? And she goes, South Carolina. But just just so you know, and you have to emphasize this point, they were tourists. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> because South Carolina is kind of notorious for being a little woohoo. <laughs> Not and not in the woohoo woo kind of way. <laughs> Speaking of woohoos. <laughs> oh god, yeah, woohoo. There's, there's plenty in that, you know, that animal rights group, PETA. Yes. I'm too sexy for my shirt. Too sexy, sorry. <clears throat> I'll let you take have you ever? Have you ever heard of being too sexy for chicken? Uh, no. 